Good afternoon, everybody. Hi. We have a very special guest today, Greer. Say hi. hi. So Greer has been my best friend since <coughs> literally I was in grade two or three. She's the first friend I ever met at my new school. Um, so through thick and thin. Um, Greer today is going to talk to us about a bit more of like a personal uh, struggle that I'm sure plenty of people can relate to. Um, and I think it's really important we kind of talk about it and shed some light onto other people's struggles that aren't necessarily physical. Um, so with that being said, take it away, Greer. They invited me onto their lovely show. <laughs> call the show? Yeah, let's call um, the show or talk show. <laughs> to talk about my experience with mental illness, which is something that I think a lot of people have dealt with, especially like in this environment that we're all living in right now going to university there's a ton of pressure on everyone to like be perfect and seem perfect so i think it's a super common experience and i really resonated with your like stronger than you think thing because it's so true that like people are stronger than you anyone assumes because like you don't know what people have been going through in terms of mental illness yeah something that's really easy to keep bottled up which is something that like i did for a long time but then once I started like talking about it and even just like little things like posting on Instagram on like Bell Let's Talk it's like seems like not that huge of a thing but it like really is can be meaningful and it's so crazy always to see like all the people who are like reach out and are like I've been through a similar thing yeah. like you would never guess totally for sure I think the open conversation that's happened in the past like five years has yeah. been for, from an outsider's perspective there has been a lot of negative connotation with that let's talk and, yeah and it's, i think it's because it seems so minuscule being like okay they posted but so did 800 other people but once one person who feels very isolated with their mental health sees someone in their mutual friend group that speaks out about it behind the scenes there are so many conversations that come from bell let's talk that aren't public but private conversations exactly. that help so many people would you say like speaking out about it too is the best coping mechanism that isn't directly like i know there's a lot of things you can do on your day-to-day -day life to try and like help reduce your anxiety and like make you feel better but would you say talking about it in a more general sense is like the best way for yourself to kind of um like cope with your struggles and like release your inner demons i think in a way it's just like the sense of relief that's like associated mm -hmm. with putting something like that out there um what was interesting to me is like i've even found that like writing something like a post on facebook or on instagram can be easier than like going to your best friends and being like mm -hmm. i'm really not okay right now i don't know what to do because that makes it like that's just so much more personal and like i think that the point of talking out at least like speaking out about this at least for me is just to like reassure people that like you're not alone and people sometimes don't love the idea of bella's talk and the whole like one day a year thing which is why i think even doing something like this is really important because it's the same idea like keep the conversation going mm -hmm. how have you kind of felt stigmatized and what kind of barriers keep you sometimes from kind of shedding light on this like the things you're going through in your life i think the scariest part of it is like just the thought of like passing people on the street who like i'm not close with but like follow on instagram like we all have those people and being like they probably read that and like what are they thinking about me right now and, but i think that that like fear that people are like talking about like me doing it for attention or just like walk past me on the street like someone that like you smile at like i've never had a real conversation with but i'm like oh my god i like put this on social media like what are they thinking now for sure i think one thing that's important when people do open up about it is that obviously there's so many people on your social media that you might not like that you probably would never open up about it to personally or yeah. have that conversation with personally but them knowing that if it does help them the impact that you probably have on strangers is really wild thing to think about because I'm sure there are hundreds of people that follow you that don't have a personal relationship with you that saw that and either think of you in a different light in a in a really positive way being like if she can do it I can start opening up to my parents to my yeah. siblings and 
and it's almost like normalizing the conversation is so important now because you shouldn't be ashamed of of your mental health in any way yeah. and the only way it can get better is through first kind of recognizing yeah so do you want to talk about how like how you first recognized that you had problems with your mental health um i think it's it's like a funny thing for me because i think i've always known that like i have this like anxiety, like I've always felt like that pit in my stomach mm -hmm. that like I kind of growing up thought was maybe normal. Right. Um, and then you kind of realize that like no one else is feeling like this. And that's kind of when I start to clue into it. So I think even like in elementary school, I remember like anytime like a teacher, I think this is a common experience, but like your teachers like were be quiet. I would like break down and be like, oh my God, like I'm in trouble. The world like, not is a ending. rational reaction. Yeah. And right. so, like, that was something that I remember from a really young age, like, not being able to handle. And, like, growing up, like, in middle school, um, just, like, the anxiety surrounding school and, like, friendships in, like, middle school is such a horrible time. And, like, I'm lucky to have had good friends that, like, we've come out on the other side mm -hmm. of that. But, like, so much anxiety surrounding my friendships and, like, the pressure in school and just, like, constant. I remember, like, waking up every day and, like, feeling so unhappy and it's a scary thing because it's as i've like learned through like dealing with my mental illness i'm not depressed yeah. um i just have had so much anxiety and not dealt with it properly in the past that it like starts to manifest into being depressed because i don't know how to deal with it properly and that's something that i dealt with a lot in like grade eight and nine when i did it couldn't recognize my, my anxiety and just felt like so unhappy in my life because I was just so anxious. How I felt in first year coming to university was like a really hard time for me and it's like you know that everyone else is struggling with the adjustment but it's like realizing that like I'm not just struggling with the adjustment of school like something is really wrong and mm -hmm. I think second semester first year for me was like the pivotal moment when I was like I'm really not okay I need to change my lifestyle and get more real help right. because I can't continue going to school in the state I'm in right now and I it's scary to think about but like I was like in such a dark place and like I know it started like affecting the people around me like I couldn't go out without like coming home like in tears and like was yelling at my friends over nothing just because I felt so alone and so dark I took some time off school in yeah. second semester I went I was home for like three weeks right um like still managed to do all my work from home just because it wasn't that long but like being so i remember like not getting out of my bed at home for like four days and just like yelling at my parents and they were like coming out on the other side of that they were like we didn't like who were you and like i would go to bed and like you know when you're upset and you go to bed and you wake up and you're like oh my god i was so upset last night but like i feel better right. now it doesn't go away like it doesn't you wake up and it's like immediately back to like this state of darkness and it literally just came from me being so anxious about everything in my life and like not being able to pinpoint what was making me so anxious which then like it's a cycle like makes me more anxious was like such a crushing feeling and it was really scary but now it's like I can look back on that and be like I made it through that I put all these systems in place so that now I'm so much happier like I honestly think I'm a completely different person from who I was then, which is so amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, but, and I've always felt really lucky. Like, I have such amazing friends, like these ladies, who are really tolerant and, like, everyone have been, has been really understanding of what I've been going through. My parents have been awesome about it, which is an experience that not everyone has. Mm -hmm. And it's like in that moment and reflecting on it, I'm so thankful that I had parents and a sister who was so supportive and my all my best friends at school were so supportive and wanted what was best for me and made such an effort to be there for me, which is so awesome. But thinking about the people who don't have that or who are too scared to reach out and see it, like seek those support systems is such a upsetting thing to think about, which is why I think that things like this are so important because it just goes to show that like, even if you're scared to reach out to your friends, you have no idea and so many people like really step up to the plate when it's time yeah if that makes sense it's yeah. pretty crazy also like the irony kind of about 
something like this and about mental health is that we have this platform that Chloe and I have created that's like for people to showcase kind of like their fight stories and the struggles they've been through and more so than any of the stories we've featured like mental health is something that I feel like a vast majority of people can relate to however it's the hardest one to find someone who is yeah. willing to talk about it and I think it's different for everyone but for me I felt like going to see a psychiatrist and being diagnosed with something and them saying like this isn't you're not just like psycho like this is really real like, yeah kind of like legitimizing yeah. all the feelings that you've had because like I felt so many times like I was like crazy because I physically like could not control this like anxiety I had mm -hmm. like I remember like literally like sobbing crying like couldn't feel my body and I was like I don't even know what's happening to me right now and like right. it was so scary and hearing a doctor be like this is normal this is what we're gonna do to help to me was really reassuring I know for some people it's not that big of a deal but I just think feeling like this is a real thing and like even goes along with the stigma that like people always say like it should be comparable to physical illness and so for me like having that diagnosis made it feel like more of a real thing and that it right. should be taken as seriously as physical illness yeah i think something that is really important though is that like for me one of the hardest things was dealing with the physical like symptoms yeah of anxiety and the way that it manifests and i know that like a lot of other people deal with this like the feeling of being like so physically sick that i'm like throwing up because mm -hmm. i'm so anxious and like so dizzy and things like that were kind of like that definitely was something that pushed me to get help and right. just because that's the type of thing that like really slows you down like when I'm like I can't get out of bed because I feel so physically sick and like something that was a really like regular experience for me was like right before I was gonna go out I would feel so physically sick and then like convince myself I was sick and I was like I can't go out like I don't feel well you, know. you start to clue in like oh I'm not just like suddenly coming down with the stomach flu every time I get ready to go to a right. party type of deal and like right. that starts to click in but like you're when you can't identify that you're like blind to it and like it seems really real for a lot of people university is the first time they ever even realize that they have issues with their mental health or, exactly. or even it's just like that's where it begins but you being able to to clue in to what your body was telling you and take that time off is so brave of you because for a lot of people it's I don't it's they're ignoring the mental signals that their body's giving them the physical signals because they're like well I don't want to miss out on I think it's also at Queens there's so much pressure on like going out and having fun when you're out and like yeah. and it also is like a coping mechanism while it's an unhealthy coping coping mechanism like, so many people are like Oh, I'm just gonna go out so like I don't have to be alone with my thoughts. I'm sure yeah. we all have can relate yeah. to that. Like when you have a bad day, you're like, I just need to go out. Today. Yeah. And university is like where people are. They're like I need to make friends. I need to find. Exactly. And sometimes like it's the first time in years that I've been alone with a bunch of new people, and that can bring on anxiety that they feel like okay, like if I just if I'm just drunk and going out, I'll be able to make these friends and like be social and be outgoing. Yeah. Question, do you think going to Queens, do you think it would have had a different impact on you if you had been at a different school where you didn't know anyone? Eloise and our other friend Megan, I've known since we were children and I've like grown up with them and know that I feel comfortable talking to them and having them there like knowing that I'm someone who I can call when I'm like that I'm really not okay right now as much as like I come so uh, like have a new appreciation for everyone who goes away for university not knowing people like right. far away it, it's not right for everyone it was not right for me thank god I had that realization yeah. before I picked my school what advice would you give to someone who is struggling with their mental health and maybe whether it's that they're at home when all of their friends are at university or they're at a university where they don't have people to to open up about and talk to. And I think my biggest piece of advice and something that I definitely didn't necessarily do in the moment is to be proactive about things. So like if you have that realization, maybe I should get help, then like go get that help. Yeah. It took me so many months of being like, maybe I need help, maybe I need help. And like hitting like what for me was rock bottom yeah. to get that help and like also like reaching out to friends who aren't necessarily 
with you 24 7 and like talking to them about things can be really helpful or your parents like because they have this different perspective not seeing you every day and like being outside of like these factors that are making you anxious that maybe aren't necessarily that big of a deal and I think just forcing yourself to try to like do things with your day I know that like when I was home it was really hard because I had nowhere to go like I was just at home to be at home right but even like I would like go get ice cream with my dad and like things like that just so I could be like I got out of the house I put on clothes like yeah. I did this one thing and like small accomplishments like that when you're at such a low point can be so motivational and then like keeping that momentum going yeah for sure so I guess just to wrap it up as someone going through a lot of changes in your life being able to admit to yourself that it's okay to feel the way that you do and and that there is there is so much help out there and support systems available wherever you are in your life is really important to recognize and also just maybe recognizing and doing that extra step to make sure the people in your life are yeah. are okay because some people aren't going to speak out about it but if you have any inkling or there's anything anyone in your life that you maybe haven't checked up on in a while yeah. and actually having like deep conversations and then giving your time to your friends and to the people that matter in your life to make sure they're okay because a lot of people don't have parents who have ever opened that discussion up with them. So making sure that those people who might not have anyone that they can talk to are have a clear understanding that you are that person for them and you would love to talk to them and, and be supportive because that's huge for, for 1000%. Them. Check on your friends. Check on your friends. Out. Make sure your friends are okay. Make sure your parents are okay. Make sure your siblings are okay. Exactly. Um, this world is a crazy place. Yeah, and crazy it's not place. easy to get through. So, <coughs> yeah. Okay, we love Greer. Thank hug. you so much for yeah, guys. letting us open up this conversation of mental health because it's probably the most important one that we'll have because it really does affect everyone. Everyone has mental health, whether it's good or bad. So, exactly. so yeah. Love Thank to you all. so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Peace out, everyone.